Buongiorno a tutti. Prima di iniziare vorrei ringraziare l'autorità portuale di Livorno e in particolare la dottoressa Querci, e Francesca Alberto, Paolo, Francesco, tanti colleghi con cui è da tanti anni che lavoriamo, ma vorrei anche ringraziare per essere stata invitata e avere la possibilità di condividere questa giornata qui con voi. Se ma permettetemi per favore di fare la presentazione in inglese perché sono un po' più al mio agio. Perfetto, sì, <laughs> Well, um, just a very brief introduction on the Port Authority of Valencia. Uh, as you know, the Port Authority of Valencia is located on the Mediterranean coast of Spain and it manages three ports, Valencia, uh, Sagunto and Gandia. In our direct area of influence, 55% of the Spanish GDP is generated and almost 60% of Spanish export and import flows are generated in our natural hinterland. And just a few figures, last year we handled 67 million tons, 4.4 million TEUs and almost half a million uh, vehicles. Traffic is growing, particularly containerized traffic, and as you can see here, uh, our import-export foreign trade traffic is almost 1.3 million TEUs, in total 4.4. So as you can see, we are also a very important transshipment hub. So in Valencia, we have a strategic plan. And our strategic goals to be uh, achieved by 2020 would be to initiate and um, uh, carry many market-led initiatives, increase efficiency, and all of these having in mind financial sustainability and social and environmental sustainability. And a crucial tool to achieve these goals is innovation. And for this reason, Fundación Valencia Port was created in 2004. This was an idea uh, by the uh, Port Authority of Valencia, and they got together with the regional government, with most of the important members of our port cluster, and together, they founded this center for innovation, research, and training. So we are celebrating, uh, well, we celebrated last year our 10th anniversary, and our goal is to innovate, to do innovation projects together with all our port cluster. And uh, since uh, we only have a few minutes, that's, it's uh, normal, I would like to show you a few examples of the work that we've carried out, most of them, as you're going to see, together with our partners here in Livorno. So we are um, very active in trade facilitation projects, inter better integration with the hinterland, energy efficiency, environmental sustainability, and in many other fields, such as safety, security, technologies. So I'm just going to talk about a few examples in each case. For every port, trade facilitation is a must. So we are all uh, in trying to invest and trying to decrease paperwork, be more efficient. So in a sentence, let's cut the red tape. How do we do that? Well, we have Valencia Port PCS.net, our port community system that is also 10 years old and uh, it's not just a coincidence. And uh, as you've learned this morning, 600 members of our port cluster use this, uh, this platform. And with different innovation projects, we are contributing to its further development. So one case was Moss for Moss. Um, this uh, project stands for monitoring and operation services for motorways of the seas. Started in March 2011 and ended in May 2012. We collaborated with Livorno, Interporto Toscano, the Italian Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure, and many other companies. Altogether, 28 partners, as you can see here. Altogether, we developed 15 different initiatives. So we started with an analysis, and then for every initiative, we had several prototypes and pilots. Those that you can see in green here have, are initiatives that have been implemented for real by now. So now, three years after the project finished, 11 out of 15 have been implemented. One of the most successful ones uh, in Spain has been the electronic T2L. When we started the project, we realized that um, when goods were uh, traded between Spain and Italy, for instance, the exporter still needed to present a paper document proving 
that the goods were Spanish and they were going to travel to Italy and this proof needed to reach customs. So this paper T2L needed to be stamped and signed by a custom officer at origin. Then that paper needed to travel to destination and again, the same paper needed to be stamped and signed. So we talked to uh, customs and Spanish customs immediately took on the challenge and decided to uh, start prototyping a solution. So we worked together in this electronic T2L and uh, in only six months, we were able to do the prototype, lots of tests with many different companies. Spanish customs saw that it was a very, um, a very good system for many companies. And according to their own estimations, 39.8 million euros of net savings are generated only in Spain by the implementation of this system. So I would like to show you a very brief video. We used to have a regional television, and uh, when we did the tests, well, Canal No uh, filmed. Es el nou document electrònic que elimina per sempre el paper. Gràcies a este sistema informàtic s'acurtaran els tràmits en el trànsit de mercaderies per mar. Només a Espanya s'estalviaran quasi 30... He's saying that uh, this new system is going to um, generate lots of savings for most exporting importers and companies that are trading intra-communitarian goods by sea. 39 millions de euros annuals. And according to Spanish customs, this is going to save 39 million euros annually. Es un documento que justifica que las mercancías que vienen en un barco son de la Unión Europea. Lo que hemos hecho en España es implementar las herramientas para que este documento pueda ser electrónico, exactamente igual que las declaraciones de aduanas de mercancías que fueran, vienen fuera de la Unión Europea. So, the manager of our poor community system was explaining that, and uh, he's also director for IT, for the whole port authority, was explaining that what we did was to try and get um, all the electronic paperwork, uh, all the paperwork into electronic transactions, um, as well as we already had done for uh, trade with third countries. El sistema se ha presentado hoy al Par de Valencia y servirá para regular de forma inmediata la entrada y la de todo tipo de mercaderías provenientes de Europa. Lo que significa sustituir todo lo que era el, el papeleo y la documentación. So the director of the Spanish customs uh, in Valencia was explaining that uh, all paperwork was going to be substituted by electronic transactions que existía por un sistema informático que sitúa realmente a la aduana española, a la aduana de Valencia, en la vanguardia tecnológica, porque este es un proyecto pionero. Project, Customs, Prototipo de la propia Unión Europea en la que se pone en desarrollo por primera vez aquí en España. Está previsto que en un mes estiga en funcionamiento este prototipo anomenat T2L. A més de nou sistema se eliminará una de las barreras que encara quedaban en el tránsito marítimo comunitario y mejorará la competitividad de las mercaderías. So a barrier has been eliminated and uh, maritime transport of communitarian goods is going to become much more efficient. So this system was already implemented in uh, 2011 thanks to this project. We did a cost-benefit analysis of MOS for MOS and only taking into consideration the 11 initiatives that have been implemented for real, the net profits that are generated are almost 55 uh, million euros. So for every euro of tentacle financing that we have received, 21 euros of net profits have been generated. One more uh, initiative that we worked on was the automatic gates for raw road traffic in Valencia. In this case, we worked with passive RFID. So this was an idea of Interporto Toscano and Port Authority of Livorno. We, start, we started working with this uh, tax. The first tests were done in Mos for Mos, but they were not uh, successful. So uh, Spanish customs still identified a few problems that we needed to continue working on because the tax were not, um, were not safe enough. So we've continued working in this uh, other project, Medita, under the coordination of Interporto Toscano and together also with Port Authority of Livorno and Regione Toscana. And thanks to the works that we have done in this new project with different RFID tags, with the Medita track system, and um, with all the pilots that we are doing uh, right now, 
Spanish Customs thinks that very positively this uh, time our gates are going to be automated in just uh, a couple of months. One more project is uh, Bitumos, Business to Motorways of the Seas. This is a project that is ongoing. It's going to finish at the end of uh, the year. 22 partners and five implementing bodies are working in this uh, project, also coordinated by Fundación Valencia Port. And as you can see here as well, we are also working with the Italian Ministry of Transport, RINA, Grupo IB, and uh, again by, uh, with uh, the Port Authority of Livorno. Just to give you one example of one of the initiatives that we are um, prototyping in this project, we are working on a robot that is going to uh, classify automatically incoming emails for employees working at freight forwarders. And this is linked to an electronic archive. So as you all know, in many uh, freight forwarders, many employees receive hundreds of emails every day. So many of these emails only contain documents attached and these documents are related to a specific shipment. So in many cases, there is no need of a person actually opening the email, reading it, and looking at the document, and sending the document to the archive, or scanning it, or checking whatever. So um, using this uh, automatic robot for incoming email, about 70% of the emails that uh, an administrative employee receives are going to be automatically uh, incorporated in the electronic archive and the electronic archive will also give the possibility to customs to do uh, inspections remotely. So the net present value of such an initiative only for b 2 most partners would be almost 5 million euros. And this is just one example. One more field of work is better integration with the hinterland. So we've also been working with railway undertakings in this case with Continental Rail, and this was one more initiative in uh, Mos for Mos. Continental Rail is a small railway undertaking, but it's growing uh, notably year after year. It's uh, offering very good connections between Madrid and Valencia, for instance, and being quite small, they didn't have a rail traffic management system when they started operating. So most of their communication with the Port Authority, with their railway undertaking managers, um, were just based on telephone calls, emails, Excel files. Thanks to this uh, new system that actually is not a million investment, it is just about 150,000 euros investment, most of their communication can be done electronically. So again, 2.6 million euros of net profits over a period of 10 years just for a small railway undertaking. We're also working in this project, Future Med. Here we are developing a new service in the PCS for the creation of train loading and loading lists and a web service for the uh, submission and confirmation of these loading and loading lists to the PCS using different formats and systems. Energy efficiency, one more field of work where we've been very active. So we started uh, working with one, one of the most successful projects um, in the list in the last five years, Green Cranes. Again, we've collaborated with the Italian Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure, with RINA, Global Service, Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna, and obviously with the Port Authority of Livorno. And I'm going to talk about the prototypes that we developed in Valencia. They also did a very successful prototype here in Livorno that has been mentioned more than once today. So one of the things we did was um, retrofitting an RTG. So we analyzed the fleet of RTGs in our largest container terminal, and we realized that many of them, over 40, were all generation RTGs that consumed more than 25 liters per hour of operation. So by uh, retrofitting these RTGs, changing the engine to, because in many cases the engines are oversized for the kind of work that they have to do. So changing the engine and um, uh, some other related systems, 45% decrease in fuel costs can be achieved. Obviously emissions also go down when you decrease fuel costs. So for every retrofitted RTG, um, the investment is recovered in less than one year 
and actually the, operate, the terminal operator can achieve net profits just after uh, a few months. And a very successful prototype has been the first LNG terminal tractor. We actually uh, won the Siemens Actualidad Económica Award that was given to us just two weeks ago for being one of the best 100 ideas in year 2014. And um, the prototype worked very well, but during the pilots we identified a few lists, uh, a list of points that needed to be further improved. Just in a few months, Terberg, that was our um, manufacturer partner, worked on those lists uh, of points, and now it's a commercial reality. The terminal tractor is in their uh, commercial portfolio, and they have already sold 40 units, 40 LNG terminal tractors, to Asia Port in Turkey. So I would like to show you a video. So this video... Um, was registered in the demonstration day that uh, we did in December 2014 in Valencia. And we showed um, the noise reduction with the LNG terminal tractor. We also did this simple test on emissions and then later on one on performance. Time. It's not so easy as we are going to do now, but uh, we were thinking a way to show you how much is the emission of each type of technology. Obviously, the inspector measures everything, and we have the real values. But now we, we are going to start with the dirty. Well, obviously, we did the, uh, the test with an in inspector from a certifying society, but just for the show, we also did this test uh, there in the demonstration. One, don't worry, I have enough tissues. The, the way to test it is going to be very, very easy. We are going to use a white tissue. You have enough? Okay, okay. In the escape, I, I'm going to help him. It's quite dangerous. So we have three terminal tractors. This is an old generation terminal tractor. Espera. Then we Estamos have listos? the diesel Estamos listos? Three Arranca ralentí. And finally the LNG one. Are you ready? Venga, písale a fondo. Písale. Písale, 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 manténlo. Well, give me the tissue. Thank you very much. The next one. Well, this is typical in terminal tractors. We don't see it usually, but this is the typical emissions in a truck until so the new stage 3B arrive, of course. So these are particulars. This is the main problem in the cities, and it's also my main problem with my chest. So we continued with the test with it's, the second one. It's not comparable. That's it's practically result. nothing. A That's little bit tier dirty. Tier three. Tier three. The improvement is amazing. Yeah, cool. Compare this. And finally? Well, let's see if it's true that the gas machines doesn't have particulars. So let's go to the other side. We have enough cable there. So number 68, remember it. Because Can you follow me, please? For the race. That's Caramba. the LNG one. Eh, separa, deja que arranque primero y después le pones el rato. OK, 10 seconds, uh, full speed. Start. So it's a very basic test, but okay. as you can see, the results Opa. are there. As uh, engineer Evangelisti was saying, LNG does uh, not let's have particles, and like we can here. all see very practical. The right one is the gas. It, it doesn't. This is the mark of the exhausted pipe. This one is the, the, the diesel stage 3 
B. And this one is the classical diesel motor. Uh, and uh, to be sure, what are we talking about and what are the real costs? And just one more minute. Of the stevedores driving the machine. Now he was talking about the train. If it's true, it's enough powerful the gas and the and the diesel machine. Actually, only one person. I think this is very, very, very important. Said that he didn't want to drive the LNG terminal tractor. So all the remaining stevedores were quite happy with it. We didn't have any problems in the terminal. Um, I've got another thing that I, we have prepared. It's online connection with the terminal tractors. I'm not sure if, if, if they work. It doesn't work. Yeah, it can be everywhere. It doesn't matter. Later we can connect. I can so show you the real... We, have, we had prepared a real-time connection with the machine to see all the values. Let me see. It's the second time I, I made this. It's not so easy. A ver, corredores, estamos en la línea de salida. Ok, no, no, estoy bien, estoy bien. Lo, lo podré hacer, ahora sí, sí. Estamos en línea, ¿estáis los dos preparados? 68, por favor, confirma. 69, confirma. Uh, okay. Ready? Steady? Go! Oh, let's uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. They are running. They are coming very, very fast. Oh, the gas is at the sea side, so that side. The diesel come from my side. They run really fast. We are. They are both on the lines. I'm not sure who is the first, but it should be the last one. Come on, fool! No soltéis el pie del acelerador, a tope los dos. Yes, it's clear. The gas is winning, the gas is winning. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, the gas wins. Yeah. So that was part of the demo day of green cranes in Valencia. And as you as you can see, the LNG terminal tractor is less noisy, it pollutes less, and is as performant. So it's uh, all benefits. So the cost-benefit analysis of green cranes shows uh, that it's uh, an excellent project also from the financial side. We received 1.8 million euros of tentacle financing, and the financial MPV is 22 million euros. The socio-economic MPV is 216 million euros over a period of 10 years. We are continuing working with sea uh, terminals. This is an ongoing project, and once again, we are very glad to be able to collaborate with the Italian Ministry of Transport, Port Authority of Livorno, Global uh, Service, uh, Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna, and OLT. One of the prototypes we are working on is dynamic lighting. And I'm not going to give you many results. I'm just going to invite you to come to the demonstration day in Valencia at the end of the year, because we'll be demonstrating this prototype and many others. If you're curious to see how you can save 80% uh, on the consumption of these uh, lighting towers, please come to our demo day. Environmental sustainability is also key in Valencia. The Port Authority of Valencia has a long history of investments in uh, environmental sustainability projects. One of uh, the projects that we've recently concluded is Costa, under the coordination of the Italian Ministry and uh, Mario Doliani, uh, working as coordinator on behalf of the Italian Ministry. Uh, our contribution to this project has been this book, Feasibility of LNG as a Fuel, for the Mediterranean shipping fleet. We've analyzed 658 vessels, so the entire fleet of short sea shipping in the Mediterranean, 
and done a financial feasibility analysis of several options. So they can continue operating with heavy fuel oil and install scrubbers or run on MGO, use LNG or substitute their vessel for a new building with different options as well. So uh, the results are publicly available. The book is for free. You can download it in our website. And we are also collaborating with the city. So in this project, SMILE, we are aiming at improving the energy efficiency, the sustainability of the city of Valencia with intelligent and sustainable mobility options. We've uh, collaborated with several, uh, several partners, with Pireus, Rijeka, Bologna, Montpellier, Barcelona. We've been working on these electric vehicles for the last mile distribution. And once again, I'd like to show you uh, a video on the results of this project. de población en torno a los núcleos urbanos genera una gran intensidad de actividad, tanto económica como comercial, en la que la distribución urbana de mercancías juega un papel fundamental en su desarrollo. She is the manager of the innovation agency at the municipality of Valencia and we are also uh, collaborating very actively with our municipality and with this innovation agency. Por otro lado, el sector del transporte es responsable de más de un 20% de las emisiones de CO2 que se vierten a la atmósfera. En este contexto, las ciudades tienen como reto la búsqueda de soluciones innovadoras que den respuesta a las necesidades que se generan, pero de manera más eficiente, reduciendo los consumos de energía, las emisiones, el ruido y la congestión de tráfico. Bajo el paraguas de SMILE, proyecto cofinanciado por la Unión Europea a través del programa EMER, seis ciudades mediterráneas, Pireo, Montpellier, Bolonia, Rijeka, Barcelona y Valencia, se han unido bajo un mismo lema, mejorar la eficiencia energética en entornos urbanos a través del desarrollo e implantación de estrategias innovadoras y la puesta en marcha de pruebas piloto que demuestren la eficacia de soluciones inteligentes en la distribución urbana de mercancías. En concreto, en Valencia, la Fundación Valencia Porte Indea coordina la prueba piloto para la mejora de la distribución de última milla. Esta prueba se ha centrado en el reparto de última milla, concretamente de paquetería, utilizando triciclos asistidos eléctricamente y con el apoyo de una microplataforma de distribución en la que se realiza el intercambio de mercancía, se almacena temporalmente dicha mercancía y además hace las funciones de parking durante la noche para los triciclos. Los operadores logísticos entregan a primera hora de la mañana pequeña paquetería y sobres a la empresa de gestión de última milla, que se encarga de realizar la transferencia al triciclo, con el cual se realizará el reparto capilar hasta su destinatario final. Los códigos postales que están incluidos en esta prueba piloto son el 46001, 46002 y 46003, que corresponden al centro histórico de la ciudad. En esta iniciativa participan los operadores logísticos TNT, Seur, DHL y ASM, así como Banapedal, que es la empresa que gestiona la última milla. El reparto de última milla es el eslabón más complejo de la cadena logística para los operadores de transporte. La saturación de las zonas de carga y descarga, el complejo entramado del casco histórico, así como la restricción de paso en las calles peatonales, dificultan la entrega al destinatario final utilizando las tradicionales furgonetas de reparto. Por ello apostamos por la búsqueda de nuevos métodos que permitan mejorar el reparto de última milla. Uh, the 
pilot is uh, quite simple, as you can see. It's a distribution in the last mile using um, bicycles. And just a final example, at the Port of Valencia, safety also comes first. So we are also participating in the Mona Lisa project. We get together with many uh, partners all over Europe, again with the Italian Ministry and with Livorno. And once again, I'd like to invite you to come to uh, Valencia in a few days when we are going to do a search and rescue exercise, uh, including a massive evacuation of 500 per, uh, people from a ferry. So which are the lessons that we've learned in this process? Choose well your partners, because it can start as uh, just a few months and just one project working together, but it could end up being many years of collaboration, fruitful collaboration. Don't be afraid to share. At times, you may think that, uh, well, you're giving away part of your secret, but you'll be surprised how often you're going to learn much more from your partner than you actually thought and make the most of it. Life has no remote. We know that in our ports we are still facing many problems, that we can still do many projects and uh, help and be more efficient. So we need to stand up and change it. And as you, all of you know, a port is what you can see, but there is another 90% that makes it strong and stable. And innovation is crucial to make our port foundations solid enough. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.